Have you ever been to a country based solely on the advice of your neighbor? I did. I took a chance. And here I am on a plane. And biblical Ararat greets me from the window. I was flying to discover one of the most unique and absolutely unknown countries to me. Armenia. Like all tourists, I was in a hurry to seek adventures. After throwing my things into my hotel room, which, by the way, was located in the Republic Square, the heart of the capital, I ran out into the streets, eagerly wanting to explore Armenia. But I was stopped in my tracks by a bucket of cold water on a hot, sunny day in Yerevan. Vartavar. A word that I will never forget. The holiday of pouring water on each other. Strange? Yeah, but it's just so much fun. I immediately realized that I could not get out of today dry, and decided to really embrace the essence of fun. It is difficult to describe with words how pleasant it is to run around with a bucket of water as a hunter for prey, and to water people on the streets. In just half an hour, I had a bunch of new Armenian friends, which I knew I would see again and again during my trip. Yerevan did not fail to amaze me on the very first day of my arrival. Trying to dry off, I suddenly noticed in the distance a cluster of people completely dry. And not only dry, but also beautifully dressed. Coming closer, I almost cried out in surprise when one of my favorite Hollywood directors, Darren Aronofsky, walked along the red carpet. It was the grand opening of the 15th annual Golden Apricot Film Festival, the biggest of its kind in the region. Unfortunately, not being able to join the film festival in wet clothes, I decided to delve into the world of Armenian cinema another way and went to the house museum of one of the most famous Armenian filmmakers, Sergei Barajanov. And here, I was shocked again as I stumbled into the mysterious fairy tale world of Parajanov. The symbolism of his works surprised and fascinated me. I wondered where he got his inspiration from, where so much depth and mysticism came from. I didn't understand it then, but at the end of my trip to Armenia, everything started to become more clear to me. That day was a real culture shock for myself. Having visited many museums, the Museum of the Matanaderan Research Center stood out the most to me. This is one of the largest repositories of manuscripts in the world. I was lucky enough to look at the inner workings of the research center, where the restoration of ancient manuscripts was in full swing. It was magical. For the first time in my life, I really regretted not knowing the old languages and the secrets they held on the origins of world philosophy. A huge number of old books and manuscripts that were in the library of the Matanaderan can definitely be called a treasure, not only for the nation, but of all humankind. After all that spiritual food, my stomach started to grumble with hunger. So, heading out to a nearby restaurant, I was suddenly surrounded by a cheerful crowd, which carried me into the depths of the streets. I found myself at the epicenter of yet another festival. Cheerful Armenians lured me from all sides and offered me glasses of wine. Denying hospitable Armenians is simply impossible. I was in the middle of the annual Armenian Wine Day celebration. 
Imagine that. In Armenia, there are amazing aromatic wines being produced from endemic grape varieties. As I later found out, Armenians have been engaged in winemaking for more than 5,000 years. I cannot help trying all kinds of wines, and none of them disappointed me. I felt delight, which apparently was shared by all the tourists that I met at the festival. But one thought didn't leave me. How can one small country have so much? To be both centuries old and yet hold on to their traditions while keeping up with modern times. That was it. I was totally intoxicated by both the wine and by the country itself. The next morning, I decided to test the authenticity of all the information I received yesterday about Armenia and decided, like an old skeptic detective, step by step to investigate the secrets of Armenia. I began my journey with the mystery of winemaking, heading to the village of Adani, where investigations were being conducted in one of the local caves. In the process, I encountered the amazing landscape of this country. Little did I know it, but the nature of Armenia was to surprise me again later. But for now, I was really only interested in the wine. As it turned out, the area where the cave is located is still famous for its abundance of various grape varieties. And naturally, it was, and still is to this day, the center of Armenian winemaking. In the cave, all doubts about the authenticity of all the stories just disappeared. At the mouth of the mysterious labyrinth, I began to notice the markings made by archaeologists. Half buried in the ground, one could see a large number of clay jugs dug into the earth, dating back to the 4th century BC, which means they're almost a thousand years older than the pyramids of Giza in Egypt. Everything clearly indicated the existence of winemaking in ancient times. Armenians still use clay jugs for preparing wine, and the skill of making these jugs has not been lost with time. In this area, pottery is especially developed, and I, naturally, did not miss the opportunity to get acquainted with one of the masters and personally see the process of creation. I was especially surprised and interested in the painting of the clay jugs. Later, the master explained to me that the history of the characters painted on the jugs goes back to prehistoric times, and that all these symbols can be seen in rock paintings not far from the local Sunik Mountains. The road to the Armenian mountains was now waiting for me. In life, one might feel a hostage to haste and fuss, constantly craving for freedom and trying to find out if there really is any at all. On the way to the mountains, I realized there is freedom, and it lives in the Armenian mountains. Climbing to the top of the slopes, I seem to be floating in the clouds, admiring them endlessly. As I once heard, it's the mountains that teach us how to achieve our goals. The Armenian mountains reminded me of this. And with great determination, I crossed the difficult terrain as quick as I could to reach my final goal and gaze upon the art of the Stone Age. And here I stood, at an altitude of 3,300 meters above sea level. Here, there are more than 2,000 carvings. Among them, one could see images of already tamed and domesticated animals, like bulls and herds of goats. Many of them depict hunting scenes. 
I was looking at and touching something that was created by the hand of a man living in the fourth millennium BC. Hour by hour, I noticed how my perception was changing, not only about Armenia, but about the entire world. I became more silent and thoughtful, trying not to miss something important. And if not for my thoughtfulness and silence, I would have not noticed yet another Armenian riddle. Descending from the mountain, in a direction not clear to me, I suddenly saw them. Huge stones, lined up in a row, towering alone and waiting for an unknown destiny. Then, I learned that the complex is known as Karahuj and is about 7,500 years old, 2,000 years older than Stonehenge. After reading on the internet a lot of unique facts and comparisons with Stonehenge, I could personally say one thing. This is a place of power. Standing in the middle of the complex, I felt an inexplicable surge of energy. Gaining strength, I continued my journey. I have already accepted Armenia with its centuries-old, mysterious history, and with its nature, its people who love their country so much, and their uncomparable mountains, which seem to merge into one. I had the impression that nature simply decided to experiment in Armenia, and at every step created unimaginably unique forms. I reached the symphony of stones and just couldn't comprehend. How is this possible? To be honest, standing in front of the rocks and looking up, I became dizzy. I was suffocating in amazement. I heard sounds of music. And at some point, I was confused. I thought, maybe the altitude was getting to me. Maybe I was overwhelmed and was starting to hallucinate. I'm not one to panic, so I decided to calm down, take a deep breath, and just realize the moment. But the music continued. Having listened, I realized that the rocks had nothing to do with it. The melody came from far away, from a neighboring village. I, like a lunatic, mechanically began to move in the direction of the music. And finally, I found its source. The music was coming from the Armenian Duduk. This instrument is striking in its simplicity, and at the same time, with a rich and deep sound. The local Duduk master helped me to figure out how and what it was made of. As it turned out, everything was simple. The wood of the Duduk comes from the apricot tree, with a few holes added to play the different notes. But there is one secret, the Armenian soul, which merges with the Duduk and sings the many stories of Armenia. In general, the Armenian soul is also very versatile. Armenians are not only hospitable and brave, but also deeply spiritual. Faith, here is the greatest wealth of this nation. This is something that one cannot take away from them, nor kill in them. Being the first nation to adopt Christianity as its state religion in 301 AD, Armenians, with inherent diligence, not sparing themselves, built churches and temples for centuries to prove their sincere faith to God.
I have never seen such a harmony between architecture and nature. The places where churches were erected were again chosen not by chance. They are places of power. I felt the same flow of energy when I was standing between the stones of Karahunj. One more thing surprised me in this nation. Being a deeply religious people, Armenians did not forget their pre-Christian history either. In Armenia, there is also the pagan temple of Garni, which was carefully restored after an earthquake in the 17th century and is now one of the most valuable architectural structures in the world and was even included in the UNESCO World Heritage List. Armenian churches amaze, not only with their architecture. The ornamental facades carved in stone are done with the highest skill and convey all the symbolism of Christianity. In the hands of Armenian sculptors, the stone simply comes to life. Another striking example of craft is the Khachkar. After the declaration of Christianity as a state religion of Armenia, its symbol, the cross, was carved onto small stone columns. Masters created not only freestanding khachkars, but some of them were carved directly into the rock walls themselves, like in the cave monastery of Gerhardt. I was lucky. Armenia accepted me. While walking through the field of khachkars in the village of Noratuz, I purely, by chance, met a khachkar master. He, like all Armenians, with joy and hospitality, invited me to see how the Khachkars were born out of the stone. When I saw with my own eyes the shapeless block of stone and how it was turned into a piece of art in the hands of a master, I finally became convinced that everything in this country is harmonious. Even a piece of stone and a person can have a conversation. Saying goodbye to the magician, I continued my way with a new purpose to go deeper into the history of Armenia. I even began to understand why neighboring nations were always trying to capture Armenia. There is something more valuable in this land than gold or diamonds. But I also realized that it was and always will be impossible to seize the land of Armenia. The Armenian people are too resistant, strong, like the mountains in this country, like the fortresses they built to protect their home. Even till now, after centuries, the walls of the Armenian fortresses are majestic. Even walking around the ruined walls, I can imagine the epic battles and fights they had seen. I wish I was a director so I could film something here in the style of Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones. Who knows? Maybe I'll do it one day. During all my travels, I have never been surrounded by so many happy people. My new Armenian friends decided to show me another Armenia. Let's go, they said, and gave me a bicycle. And we were off. At some point, I couldn't believe that I was still in Armenia. 
the wind in my face, flying by green forests and alpine meadows. God, where am I? You're in heaven, bro, they said to me and patted me on the shoulder laughing. They were telling the truth. The guys conspired, and especially for me, they took me down the Paradise Trail. Our first stop on our trip was the Forest of Paradise, Las Tiver. Till today, there are still no signs of civilization here. Forest river, tree houses for the summer season, and in winter, a comfortable cave with a stove. Believe me, I will not trade one day here for 10 days in a luxury resort. The good day just kept on coming. My new friends looked at me and whispered and laughed at my childish delight. The next point of interest was a view of the monastery complex Tatev, but from the air. I was rolling along the longest ropeway in the world. Yeah, the world. What can I say? I know I'm repeating myself, but I can't say anything other than how amazing, delightful, and beautiful everything was. I was struck by strong emotions, constantly poking my finger at the window, trying to show everyone else how beautiful the nature was, how fabulous the monastery was. And between all these exclamations, I kept saying, how I wish I was a bird so I could fly around Armenia. And my friends, as usual, patted my shoulder and said that in Armenia, Dreams often come true, and I have to be more careful with my desires. My heavenly journey continued. This time, the guys did not say where we were going. They just hinted they wanted to prepare me for the most unforgettable experience in my life. Okay, I thought. Is there anything left that could surprise me in this country? I felt a whole flock of butterflies fluttering in my stomach. Having reached another corner of paradise, the guys asked me to trust them and not to resist. But I just wasn't so confident and meekly followed them. No, it's better that I don't say what happened to me. Instead, I will just say that adrenaline is good for you. If someone told me that I would do something that extreme in my life, I would have laughed and said, nah, that's not for me. I would rather have a soft cushion, a terry robe, and a glass of wine. Uh, Armenian wine, of course. Without this video, no one would have ever believed me that I even stood close to that zip line. Now you're ready, my guardian angel shouted. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. I was ready for everything. But you can't imagine what I was ready for. Yes, in Armenia, dreams do come true. I floated in the sky over Armenia like a real bird. From a bird's eye, Armenia is even more fascinating. It makes you fall in love with the country. It felt as if I saw the dark side of the moon. And 
Finally, I saw the veins and blood that nourished this land. Rivers, ponds, waterfalls, like diamonds adorned a temperamental woman, Armenia. I got to know the stone, the rocks, flew with the Armenian wind, and now I wanted to flow with the Armenian water. My friends simply spoiled me. Believe me, it wasn't just the adrenaline speaking, but the delight of the fact that on our earth, there is a place where you can feel everything. In Armenia, you can again feel like a human, harmoniously merging with nature and with people and with yourself. The day was coming to its end, but not our journey. The guys decided to end the day on the shores of the Armenian Sea, better known as Lake Sevon. Even Sevon was better than the sea. The cool and fresh water was refreshing to the body. Sun burnt under the Armenian sun like no other sea in the world. And after a hot day, the night of paradise is found on the beach. The sky and water merge into one, and you feel like part of the universe. This is the morning of my last day in Armenia. My happy Armenian friends, the beach, Armenian water and clean air surrounded me. All that was missing was a genuine Armenian breakfast. Friends continued to care for and take care of me and offered me breakfast in one of the local villages to get acquainted with the local cuisine. Authentic food is everywhere in Armenia. Just imagine what you can grow on this kind of land, with this kind of water, and this kind of sun. Then, add the Armenian touch. That carefully cultivates and prepares and you will get the purest and most natural product you have ever tasted. Time passed. And it was time for me to return. My farewell was the worst moment in the whole trip around Armenia. I wanted to keep enjoying this fantastic country, the people, freedom and beauty just a little bit longer. But what could I do? Every good story has an end. I took the train and headed back to Yerevan. On the way, I thought a lot. I pondered and flipped through everything I saw and felt here several times.
realized that in just a few short days here, I had changed a lot. I began to treat people, nature, even myself more carefully. I wanted to go home and hug all my loved ones, my friends, my relatives, acquaintances, even strangers, and tell them how much I love them. And tell everyone how important are the simple things in life and how we forget about them in our race for the illusion of happiness. When we have happiness right under our nose, I got to Yerevan at night. My plane flew off at dawn, but I did not want to waste time sleeping and decided to say goodbye to Armenia by walking the cozy and safe streets of the city at night. Maybe some will say that I have become too sentimental. But no, I just felt that I had lost a lot of time on the frivolous, and I had forgotten to sincerely smile and wonder Rejoice and love. Thank you, Armenia. I love you, and I'm not saying goodbye. <laughs>